Good morning or hello from my hotel room in Kyoto. And you might now think, oh, Billy, you are actually traveling such a lot. I'm not. It's a business trip and I'm gonna take a bunch of seminars from tomorrow on that actually take the whole day about kimono making, different weaves, different dyes, a tiny bit about sewing. That seminar is usually the most boring because I actually sew kimono. And also a tiny bit about kimono history. So I'm gonna learn a lot and my brain is gonna t explode tomorrow. But today we're gonna have fun. Kyoto was the political and cultural center of Japan for over a thousand years. And I think you still can feel that with all the shrines and temples in the city center. And until today, Kyoto is still regarded as the capital of Japanese craftsmanship. So when you go antiquing or thrifting here, you will find things that you probably might find somewhere else in Japan. But today we're gonna go antiquing and I'm gonna take you with me. I'm gonna meet my friend Kat. She's a fellow kimono enthusiast and she actually <laughs> planned like the whole day and I feel so sorry but also so thankful that she did this. Thank you so much. I'm not sure if my tiny souvenir from Kyoto, not Kyoto, Kumamoto. I am from Kumamoto. If my tiny souvenir from Kumamoto is actually <laughs> enough thank you so much i have a tiny list in my head of things i want it's sewing supplies hopefully cleaning supplies for kimono we'll see what is out there and yeah you can see it's more for the daily life we're probably not gonna go kimono shopping because i am living in a different place in japan where second kimono are not that overpriced like in kyoto because kyoto has many tourists a lot of people who buy kimono here but we'll see we'll see of course when i see a kimono store I will probably run in because that's me. <laughs> it's obviously raining cats and dogs today and that is why I'm wearing these sandals. They're gonna look awful with this kimono I swear. You know I just didn't want to pack two pair of zodi so I'm gonna wear these sandals I thought I'm just gonna live with the fact that I'm gonna look awful for a whole day. It's fine. And I also brought a raincoat. Where's my raincoat? Here. I brought my favorite raincoat. This raincoat! It's so cute and it's from H&M. I bought this, I think, 12 years ago when it was the first year in university. And it's just a normal H&M raincoat and it works perfectly for kimono because it has these sleeves here. When you find this style somewhere online, your thrift store can only recommend. This was probably one of those buys I buys, bought, purchases. <laughs> this is one of those fast fashion purchases I have never regretted. So yay for that. And because I have to bring you and my camera and everything, I will unfortunately have to bring this big bag with hedgehogs on it that I got for my birthday. Thank you. And while we're already in hedgehog mode. I don't have to show you that actually, but this is also a birthday present I get got from a patron. Tied them with red jocks. Oh my gosh, I'm already missing Francis so much. And my sewing teacher is super into leather craft, so she made this wallet bag. And she gave it to me before I went to Kyoto and said, Oh, try it in Kyoto and tell me how it is. So I'm gonna take this one with me too. It looks very convenient actually. And because rain in Japan never means it's cooling down, it means it's still hot outside. I'm wearing a summer Remy kimono, this brand new one. I'm really in love with this. And I'm wearing a Nagoya Obi that I made myself out of cotton. So it's 100% cotton. The only two real things that are silk in this outfit is my Sambuhimo and my Obi Age. They're hopefully not gonna get wet, so it's gonna be fine. Okay, so let's put those shoes on and let's go.
The original plan was going antiquing and it was not disappointing but it was very pricey for sure and also not so many stores as I had expected. I also didn't find any of the stuff that I was actually actively looking for. I found some cute obidome. I didn't purchase them because they were too expensive. I found some really cute things but it was just not what I was looking for. It's why I didn't buy it. For sure when you want to go antiquing in Kyoto go to a flea market. Definitely they have huge flea markets there. I've never been to a flea market in Kyoto to be honest. I have been to flea markets in other cities like the one in Fukuoka. The video will also link down below. And I do think that a flea market is actually a better option and you can bet that one day there will be a video about this on my channel. Right now they aren't held because of state of emergency. We will see. Still, what I really like about shopping in Kyoto, and this is something I actually really found out for the first time there, although it was probably my hundredth time being in Kyoto because I mean it's Kyoto. What I didn't know is that Kyoto has actually a lot of Senmon Ten is what you would call it in Japanese. It's like smaller businesses and they're actually focusing on one thing and that's what they're selling there. So you have, for example, kanzashi stores, even for the antique stores, you have antique stores that have randomly antiques and there were actually antique stores that actually had um, only furniture there. By the way, they didn't let you film inside. That's why I don't have any footage of them. So I thought I'm going to show you at least what I have bought generally in Tokyo, uh, in Kyoto. I tend to say Tokyo instead of Kyoto, I'm so sorry. If I've done this a few times in this video, I already apologize. <laughs> so I thought I'm going to do a general overview what I have bought because I do have actually also favorite stores that are in Kyoto and I think I'm just gonna give them a tiny shout out and there are a few stores that actually my friend Kat brought me to. I went to the first time and initially became my favorite stores <laughs> so I want to talk about them too and probably the next time when you're in Kyoto you probably might want to check them out. So I'm gonna start with just um, random kimono things because there is this one store in Kyoto that is called Otsuka Gofukuten. It's a it's a like a select shop. Do you call it select shop? Is that again Japanese English? In Japanese you call it selecto shop. It's like shops that only select specific pieces they really like and put it in their store. It's not like just one brand. They select different brands and put it in their store. And Otsuka Gofukuten is really modern style, very simple modern style, um, very casual kimono. Um, they don't sell like formal kimono, they're more on the casual kimono wave. They have really pretty stuff there. I will link their location down below. My story with Utsuka Gofukuten is actually quite long because I have found them when I migrated to Japan in my first year of migrated to Japan and my best friend visited me. Hi, she's probably not watching anyway. But um, we went to Kyoto and I saw this kimono store from far away and in the window they had this super colorful kimono. You might know it's, <laughs> it is extremely famous. It's probably, everyone loves it kimono, I know. I've just put it into a daihari and I already came back, I already um, picked it up. So ha we'll have to re-sew it because it needed some starch to be re-strengthened because I wore it so often. That is that kimono I bought there. And since then, I'm just really in love with Otsuka Gofukten and when I make it to Kyoto, I go there. So I just got some kumono, um, small accessories for wearing kimono and I just found out I forgot one. I will have to bring that on. Give me a second. Okay, so what I got is um, two sambu himo. I still haven't taken the tags off because I haven't worn them yet. And yeah, I wear sambu himo a lot and this is actually a color I was really looking for. So this is cool. And I like when the sambu himo are a tiny bit patterned. So yes. This is pretty cool. I also got a obi age for summer. Um, I'm still looking for obi age for summer because um, you should look for them throughout the year because when you look for a color that might everyone might be looking for, it's really hard to buy that. And it's really pretty pretty. It's tango chiri men, I think. Yeah, it's tango chiri men. So those are really easy to tie and I really love the color. By the way, the color you see on camera is not the exact color. <laughs> and then I got 
a obitome from Kimito. They still had one left in the store, which is really cool because Kimito is one of my favorite brands for obitome. They're extremely popular. I'm gonna link them down below. You will love all of their stuff. And um, they only make every design just once. And when they sell out, they sell out. So they're not so easy to get. And I was really lucky because they had still one left and it was exactly uh, Obidome I was looking for. You know that I wear a lot of white Obidome and this also has a tiny bit of green here on the top. So it was just perfect. So I was kind of like, oh, is this Kimita? Okay, I'm gonna take the one here. <laughs> so this is kind of the stuff you can get in Utska Kofkten. So when you're in Kyoto and they're right in the center of any tourist spots. So when you visit Kyoto, please go. They're amazing. They're basically my favorite kimono store. They also have really cute Zodi. I have like, I think three or four pair from them. In the street where we had started, there was a special store filled with buttons, only buttons and buckles. It was amazing. <laughs> the old man there was fun as well. I can only recommend and I've never seen so many buttons somewhere, not even in the fabric district in Tokyo. I have never seen so many buckles and buttons and I definitely will go back to get some more buckles because I got a buckle. I got this buckle and you might think, oh Billy, why are you getting a buckle? You can use them for your hakama. Instead of tying the tie on the front, you can close them with a buckle. That's why I got one. Here's a buckle for more hakama adventures. And in Kyoto is actually one of my very favorite um, fabric stores. I usually purchase from them online. I follow them on Instagram. You should do. You should too. They're called uh, Nomura Tera. And I bought... A huge pile of corduroy <laughs> because I am planning on a corduroy hakama for a few years now since um, this fabric store had like the cutest corduroy in the cutest colors on their Instagram it was kind of like screams hakama to me <laughs> so yes I bought like um, four meters of this and I'm gonna put this into a hakama and I think it would really fit nicely with the buckle uh, they're probably basically my hakama store right now because um, the fabric I actually made my hakama of was also from Nomura Teira. There is my favorite tenugui. We should talk a tiny bit about tenugui on this channel in the future because I use them a lot. Tenugui are Japanese handkerchiefs. Um, they're just a piece of cotton. They're just cut down. They're very narrow. They're just cut down. There's nothing sewed or whatsoever. And there's this one store Eirakuya and they're really for Tenugui they're tiny bit prices they're twice of like the normal price but they're like the oldest cotton merchant in Japan because they exist since 1615. I got this really cute Tenugui with Michael on a bicycle. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I love this one. I don't know how I will use it, but I think even on my head, I actually like it. <laughs> you could also just hang this up and put it on the wall if, you, if you're if you that kind of person, but I'm actually using them. And the reason why I actually said now I'm gonna buy one this time is because I really couldn't get around this Halloween <laughs> Tenugui. It's amazing. I love like all the tiny Michaels here. Like this little witch here in Kimono is everything. And I actually want her Obi. I actually want this Obi, I think. Oh, can you see this? It has spider webs on it. <laughs> it's just awesome. Um, there was this one Kanzashi store and um, I walked by a few times and on the last day I decided to go in and I purchased two kansashi. They even come in this little box here. It's like so nice. I bought myself a tiny ginkgo leaf. I tend to say ginkgo in Japanese too, but it's actually called icho in Japanese. I have a tiny obsession with ginkgo leaves because they're extremely pretty, but also they are the tree of Kumamoto City. <laughs> Yes, every city has a tree in Japan. But I think having actually Ginkgo as a tree for their city is like most cities in Japan because come on, they're just really pretty. I talked a tiny bit to um, the lady in the store and she filled me in that the um, artisan 
who actually made this Kansashi has passed away last year so there there will not be a second one of this so I was kind of like okay then I will have to buy two <laughs> the second one is a tiny bit bigger I'm totally for this I'm actually happy I finally did the step and bought these um you don't see me wearing Kansashi very often it's basically just because I don't own many because I bought a few cheap in the past and now I'm like on the I need Kansashi to actually look like quality not like the cheap ones this was my first step into quality Kansashi they were also not too expensive this one was around 150 euro you might think this is expensive it's not when you think it's handmade and this one was uh, about around 50 euro so this one was not this expensive it's made of Tsuginoki you probably know that um, those wooden combs um, that were used in the past in Japan. Um, they're made of tsuge no ki, which is a tree. She said it's boxwood. I have no idea what that is, to be honest. Um, please go there. They're like right in the city center. Like you can't miss them. They also have obitome and they had way too much cute stuff that... <sighs> anyway. Then there was this one store Kat actually brought me to. They're called Erisho and it is a komono store. They don't sell kimono there. They have a lot of obitome, obijime, obiage, embroidered han eri, um, and they have a lot of hadagi, like the shifts you wear under a kimono, which is the first layer you should wear under your kimono. And what I found really cool there is that they have many different sizes, like they have extra long sizes. Because when you're not a tiny and thin person, you might need extra long size for obijime and obiage to actually tie it nicely and don't have like the ends up peeking out somewhere here. Oh, you could see my cable all the time here. Why didn't you tell me guys? When you wanna have it really nice, you probably need an extra length, which is absolutely fine because they're produced. You just need the place to get them and Eddie Show is one of them. Um, they also had like really cute shifts and they also make them in um, bigger sizes. You can also actually order them there, which was really cool. I didn't buy anything there because they didn't have anything that was like really peeking out. Like, you know, something I really needed. I still want to recommend them to you because you need to know the places where you can buy bigger sizes. No, you don't have to force yourself into the smaller sizes when you don't want to. Another shop my friend Kat brought me to was actually a needle shop. <laughs> it was a store only for needles. They have embroidery needles and sewing needles. They also have just pins to pin stuff together. It was the most exciting for me. <laughs> this store exists already for, I wanna say a century, I have to look it up. It was something with Edo period. They gave me like a whole cute um, pamphlet. I didn't really, my husband read it, I didn't. But they already existed in 1655. And um, it's hand, they also sell handmade needles there. Anyway, they also had something, and this is what I was actually super excited about. <laughs> they had this box, and this is a traveling needle box. Let's open it up. It contains a tiny pink cushion in the head of this box. <laughs> Just so in love with this. <laughs> they have tiny scissors, like super tiny scissors. They're so cute. And they are, by the way, handmade, they said, because they can't just industrially produce them in the size. And then we have some spools, or how you would call in Japanese, itomaki with already and they also it also has some needles in it they are san no yon which means san are needles used for cotton sewing and yon is extremely long so this is basically just to sew a button on um, like what you have to fix i'm definitely gonna put my needles my um, silk needles into it i would have actually i asked them i would have loved to be able to choose needles that come with this actually that is what i would have really loved 
even if it's just five of those needles why don't you just let people choose the needles they're actually using then we'll see if they're gonna take it into consideration okay that's um basically it what i bought i hope you enjoyed this tiny haul in the end of this video when you're new here and you want to learn more about kimono from a professional kimono teacher please subscribe i would be really happy to have you here and Thank you so much for watching and I talk to you in my next kimono adventure. Bye! <laughs> I was actually about to cover up the lens, but I'm not doing that. That's Rachel Maxi. Bye! <laughs>